up in the feed. <clears throat> we didn't have any Wi-Fi connectivity issues. However, the encoder panel was not populating. So as a result, it wasn't going to show you the scores throughout the game. So apologize, we have dropped the initial feed. This is the live stream. All you have to do is just go back and refresh your browser, click on the live one. Get right to the pitcher. Base runner will advance after the steal. Fielder's choice, 1-3. And it is two down now after the fly out to third base. Wallops it out to left field. And it is a four up, three down inning for Worcester. Waffle ahead to the bottom of the first inning coming up to bat. You're watching Prep Nation TV. Reminder, game one in the books. Rattan victorious over Allen, 10-0, final through four. Weather permitting, Wi-Fi connectivity, barring any issues, we will be streaming all remaining games for the tournament. So that'll be games two through 10. I'd like to thank our coverage sponsor for today's live stream, Tidwell Sports and Community State Bank. in for the strike. One down.
for another strike, keeping up the count 1-1. One, one. Ball is shallow fly out. Shortstop is going to call it. Waves off the left fielder. Two down. Games on tap today. Schedule will be approximately 12, 2, 4, and 6. Your 4 o'clock game will feature the Silo Rebels versus the Tupelo Tigers. And then to close out day one action today will be the Wright City Lumberjacks versus the Valiant Bulldogs. Games tomorrow will be 12, 2, 4, and 6 again. Morning games will flip-flop top and bottom sides of the bracket. And then they invert for the evening games as well. So losers will play tomorrow at 12 and 2. The winner's semifinal main games will be at 4 and 6. And then on Saturday, your fifth place game will be approximately noon. Third place game, 2 o'clock. That one comes with an asterisk whenever the other game finishes. And then the championship game will be at 4 p.m. And again, that will be if the other games ahead of them finish in time and on schedule. Roth gets the walk, so both teams in the first inning have a base runner on. Tigers will actually be in three consecutive tournaments that we're covering. We saw them at the tease a week prior. And for the strike. Obviously, they're here at the Rattan Classic, and then we will see them at the Atoka Woodbat Tournament next weekend, the Sean Hall Memorial Tournament. And in addition, we may see them again down the road throughout the season, but that is the schedule so far. So tournaments for the next two weekends will be April 4th through the 6th at Atoka High School, and then April 11th through the 13th, Coleman Classic. Ripped up the middle, flies out both teams. Strand the base runner through one. Your score, Roth zero, Worcester zero. You're watching Prep Nation TV. Falls for the single that drops right in between the legs and the outstretched glove of the shortstop.
Throws down the potential sack bunt. Opportunity not given on the ball call, so I believe it'll be a 2-0 count. The bunt we spoke of, base runner advances to second. Fielder's choice gets him on the 5-3 toss, safe in on the throwback at second. So back-to-back -back innings, Wister with the base runner on second. They strand in the first with the hot shot over to third base, a walk, stolen base, and then a little drooping shot out in center, and then the fly out to left field. Rips it to short. Fires over 6-3 on the ground out. Two down. Base runner will advance to third base, though. So runner in scoring position now for the Wildcats here with two down at the top of the second. Deep shot out to left field. It's going to clear the wall. And it is a two RBI home run for Worcester. They are on the board, clearing the base. <laughs> Goes over the wall right by the Ameristate Bank banner on the left field wall. Wasn't close either after contact made. That one was a deep riser. Went very high over the wall and clears the fence. <laughs> the looping single that's going to drop out into right field as well. Another base runner on for Wister. Another single for Worcester. They are on fire here now in the top of the second. Base runners first and second. They lead Roth 2 0. Back to back singles. A beautiful day here at Rattan High School. Pitch count for the Tigers, two runners on, 2-0 deficit here early on. Come on, 
In for the money pitch. Fouls it off, stay alive. We'll have the full count. Base runners will return back to second at first. Base runners go, hit second base. A correction, shortstop. Fielder's choice on the throw out. Worcester scores two, strands two. We'll head to the bottom of the second inning with Roth coming up to bat. You're watching Prep Nation TV coverage of the 2024 Ram Rattan Classic. As is known from time to time, going to some of the smaller towns, there are weird technical glitches. When we were in Batiste, absolutely no reception whatsoever. I had to record the games and even just recording and then going down to the school to try to manually upload them. It took two of the games eight days to upload, had to do them I, literally almost a dozen times. We got here today, perfect weather, beautiful weather. And for whatever reason, encoder panel would not populate, so we had to drop the first clip. I hate to do that, so all you really missed in the game was a walk in and out. So hopefully we should be good to go for the remainder of the day. Two more games on tap, Tupelo Silo and Wright City Valley. Second season at the helm for Derek Collins for the Roth Tigers. It's been a season of change for Roth after just a modicum of consistency for years. Pete Simon is the baseball coach, handing it over to Danny Baldridge. Baldridge making it only three and a half seasons. And then Derek Collins coming on now. This is his second full year. Got a little bit of a tilt to the camera, so if it's bobbling or shaking, it's because I'm trying to keep it straight on the tripod. If anybody has any impact cement or glue, we may be able to fix the one adapter to hold it straight on the other. Otherwise, the other models aren't the best for keeping it perfectly straight. Ball is thrown wild. 1 1 pitch count will resume. Base runner safe at second.
Well, he got worse for wear on that one. The audible grunt from the umpire there, that had to hurt. Center field fly out. Back second, they're going to get him. Two six toss out. Base runner knew it too. Could see him pounding the dirt. Missed time to jump back and could not get up off the ground. Ended up, you can see a little streak there of dirt. It was a good three feet shy of the bag. Nine out of ten times, that's a, an easy get back, but he loses his footing and just pretty much flies face down toward the dirt. Two down. First base, three unassist tag for Wister. And the Tigers strand one on the toss out. No run score. Your lead right now for Wister seems pretty safe, secure 2 0. Wildcats will be coming up to bat, top of the third inning coming up. All the way to the wall at center field. It will be another double for the Worcester Wildcats.
Field pop up goes to the first baseman. Base run remains on second for Worcester. One down. Robson at the wall, E7. It's going to score the run. In effect, it's going to be an RBI double in safe at second. It was a very, very close throw, though. So I'm not calling that officially an RBI. However, on the normal scheme of things, hits it, runs to second, second base runs in home. 3-0 lead now for Worcester. It is pretty sunny today, and I'm assuming the outfielder thought he had it up into the point that he didn't have. count three two hooks and goes foul ooh runs right into the wall Base runner goes in for, oh, looked like he was out. Oh, 
single wister 4 0 lead. It's going to stretch this one into two. Two run score on the top of the second, two in the top of the third. Couple of miscues for Roth here in the third inning. Two things basically making a huge momentum shift. One, a dropped ball in left field. And then a razor, razor close toss out at third base that could have negated another run off the board as is 4-0 Worcester, base runner at second base. And they are looking to extend their lead over Roth. Two RBI blast over left field wall in the second inning made it a two zip game. And then now a couple of errors here. I had an E7. And he dropped it literally right up against the fence that would have just been a normal fly out deep, you know, deep to the wall, step back and throw it. I personally thought Roth did get them on the toss out at third base. However, he was called safe. Another run scores after the RBI. Another momentum shift for Roth, obviously. They tag out at second base. Base runner gets a really good lead. Catcher jumps the throw, catches him off guard. Instead of being able to dive back in safe, he trips, falls, can't get back up, gets tagged out. Ball gets behind him. Base runner will advance on the base to first with the fourth ball and then steals third. Runners on the corners, two outs here for Worcester in the top of the third. Game earlier today, Rattan run ruled Allen 10-0 through four innings. So that will put the hometown Rams in the winner's bracket for tomorrow evening's game. That will drop and slot Allen into a punch out game tomorrow. Base runner is going to be tagged. Oh, ho, 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 ho. that one was close. Safe steals home. Still second. 5-0 lead. Umpire's explanation is is missed the foot, tagging the knee. It was very close. All right, so getting back to uh, games for tomorrow, basically the way the bracket work, if you have those in hand, game five losers will, in effect, play at noon. And then the game four losers or the top part of the, of the bracket will meet at 2 p.m. So those of you that are curious, the top bracket is Rattan Allen and Silo Tupelo. And then the bottom bracket being Roth Worcester and Wright City Valiant. So we know that Allen, based upon losing their game, they will be in the 2 o'clock game tomorrow. And then the loser of this game, Roth Wister, will slot to the noon game.
Well, Roth has got the work cut out for him. We will head to the bottom of the third inning. Scores now Wister 5, Roth 0. You're watching Prep Nation TV coverage of the 2024 Rattan Ram Classic here at Rattan High School. Pitch will advance the base runner. Back to back innings now for Roth getting a lead runner. See if they can maximize now. Gets him on the swing and a miss. This is the second game of the tournament. So far, it's been one-sided affair. Rattan 10-0 over Allen. And so far, Worcester 5-0 over Roth. Closing team struggling with getting batters in position to score. Timely hits and some errors. Offensive onslaught for Rattan early on. Didn't take long to ice the game through four innings with the run rule in effect. I believe I saw that they are 12-3, 8 
10 4 and 8 5, if I remember correctly, on the bracket for the tournament. Gives him the corner, 2 1 on the call. Second in safe. Apologize for any nasal drainage in the background there. I've done my best to limit it. It's been a rough couple of months with the bipolar weather in Oklahoma. I had a second bout of bronchitis. This time I got an upper respiratory infection. So for much of the last two and a half weeks, been able to literally barely be able to speak without just wicked coughs and absolute laryngitis. The end for the strike. Base runners first and second. First time in the game, Roth has pulled that off. Looking to get on the board here. They're shut out so far through bottom portion. Cross hits. Going to be a problem ball if it stays fair. And it doesn't. Chases it down. Catches it. Roth strands two. Absolute backbreaker for the Tigers. We'll head to the top of the fourth inning with the Wildcats coming up to bat. We're watching Prep Nation TV coverage of the 2024 Rattan Ram Classic. Worcester five, Roth zero.
And a deep shot to center field. That one's going to keep traveling. One hops almost off the wall, and it'll be another stand-up double for the Worcester Wildcats. With the advanced base, that is in effect the third double in as many hits for Worcester. That's a winning recipe. Ooh, does hit the wall. So back-to-back -back doubles. Third RBI double of the game for Worcester. And it is now officially 6-0. Wildcats only have one out here in the top of the fourth inning. Safe at third on the advanced ball. Base runner will advance to first on the hit by pitch. Runners once again on the corners for Worcester. Run rules in effect, even though I don't anticipate it getting quite this out of hand. So we've got 12 after three, 10 after four, which is where we would have to be heading into the bottom of this inning. And then eight out five. Fly out to center, tags up, really good throw. On point, Roth staves off a potential run on the sack RBI, so it is a fly out to center field. He hit very good contact for it. Unfortunately, the wind didn't lift that one. It just kind of jammed it and put it right up and framed it for the center fielder. Didn't really have to really move that much to catch it either.
Field pop up fly. Well, the Wildcats will strand two. However, they score another run. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth inning with the Tigers coming up to bat. You're watching Prep Nation TV coverage of the 2024 Rattan Ram Classic here at Rattan High School. Beautiful afternoon Thursday. I'd like to thank our coverage sponsors for today's live stream, video highlights, and plays of the game Community State Bank and Tidwell Sports, etc. about as close as it gets to hitting the camera. Well, Tigers have found themselves in a real hole here. They've had four base runners on. Closest that they've got to scoring was second base, tossed out on a pickoff from home, and catcher just caught the base runner, kind of stuck, falls, can't quite get back to the bag, and is out. It has been all Wildcats with doubles and singles. A couple of errors for the Tigers helping out. A couple of close tag outs at third at home plate as well. Had to even up the pitch count 1 1. Thank <laughs> you. 
trying to figure out if we've got a school bus that, ah, oh, there we go. <clears throat> so it looks like one of the rattan buses either moving a team or some students out for the day. Almost had a loading dock sound in the background there. So the 2-0 pitch count with one out here, the bottom of the fourth for the Tigers. They have been shut out thus far, pretty much held scoreless and hitless, even though they do have one bloop into center field for a single. A couple of base runners from walks and then one hit by the pitch. Otherwise, Worcester pitcher been in pretty good command up until that pitch puts him on the base with a 4-0 walk. Rips it up the middle. And there's the single that Roth is needed. Base runners first and second again. The bunt perfectly executed for an infield single. Bases loaded, Roth Tigers. Similar to the had the catch in his glove until he dropped it in command of pitching until he wasn't. Roth now exactly what they need to get back into this game. They trail 6-0. Best part for them, three base runners on, only one out. And a real opportunity here to get a run in a variety of ways, either through a, a single hit, double, triple, error, wild throw. Kind of gives them some flexibilities on calls here now, what they want to do at the plate. Flies out to right, base runners advance. Roth gets on the scoreboard. Sack RB out of right field. Oh. 
And Roth unable to convert. Go ahead at the top of the fifth inning. Your score now 6-1 Worcester. Wildcats coming up to bat. And fires it over 5 3.
Rod Center. So it is a three up, three down inning for the first time. Roth gets a stop. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Score remains Worcester six. Roth one. You're watching Prep Nation TV. Base runner on now for the Tigers. the 463 it looks like
a three-up, three-down inning for Roth as well. We're glad to the top of the six with Worcester coming back up to bat. You're watching PMTV. Worcester with the single out to center field. Hustles it up as well in safe at first. Yeah. 
to right field. A little bit more shallow diving catch by the center fielder. In play, flicks it over, and it is a 4-6 fielder's choice tag. We'll head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Tigers need five runs, running on outs. You're watching PNTV coverage of the 2024 Rattan Ram Classic. Hey, here we go, 
Base runner advances for Roth. <clears throat> Two down here at the bottom of the sixth. They'll have the base runner coming up. Needing to score runs here desperately down at their final four outs. Back to back walks now put the base runners first and second. Apologize for that. I inadvertently hit the uh, pause button. He missed two walks for Roth. Let's go. 
him out. <laughs> well, it may not have looked like we were heading that way at the start of the game. We are now in the top of the seventh, and this one will go the full seven innings with Roth being the home team and having the final at bat. Next game up at approximately 4 p.m. will feature the Silo Rebels versus the Tupelo Tigers.
Largely much to do about nothing with the water. Flies out to center. Tags up. Base runners now on the corners for Wister. Here it is. Final opportunity for Roth. They'll need at least five runs to stave off loss here. Otherwise, we'll have our second official victory of the day. First game went the way to Rattan, 10-0 over Allen. With the way that the bracket slots, and I know that not all people that tune into the coverage have access to the brackets. And so it's not your standard top bottom just stays kind of true to form. They do a little bit of a flip flop during the day, but long and short, Allen slots to the two o'clock game. They will play the loser of Tupelo or Silo. Rattan will get that winner. If the result should hold here, Roth will slot to the 12 o'clock game. They will play the loser of Valiant and Wright City. And then again, Worcester would get the winner of that last game of the evening at 6 o'clock tonight between Wright City and Valiant. So games tomorrow, 12, 2, 4, and 6. Only games that probably will get started right on the dot exactly, 100% for sure, is the 12 o'clock game. However, we did start a little bit early today for the, for the next game due to the other one being a run rule. So we still have a really good shot to get cranked up here for the 4 o'clock game between Silo and Tupelo. That'll be coming up to you on Prep Nation TV. All you'll have to do is just refresh your browser and look for a new live red button. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so. It is free. You'll prioritize content whenever you're inside the YouTube app. And more importantly, you'll be supporting our business so that we can get more sponsors. Um, it makes it much easier for me to be able to tell somebody, hey, you know, we've got 6,000 people that watch our games routinely versus six. Roth will need a huge bottom seventh here. A lot of people very interested to see what happens to Silo now that they have moved up to 3A. No matter what, their streak 
as the Class 2A state champion will come to an end, barring the COVID miscue and scan scam dominium that ensued with everybody just literally hyper reaction, knee jerk reaction and kids ruined opportunities to play in sports, graduating, locking up loved ones in retirement homes, not being able to see anyone, talk to anyone, shop certain places. Just an absolute nightmare of a scenario that was a fake scam from the beginning. However, that will change one unique aspect for Silo potentially going for the seventh consecutive title. And that is, should they pull it off this spring, they'll have to do it in Class 3A with the two-time defending champion Washington Warriors. Obviously having a lot to say about that. In for the strike. One hops in the dirt. That one actually flies over the back dugout. Very rare to see a ball hit the dirt and bounce that high, but it cleared the entire dugout and the building here for the concession stand. And walk seems to Roth has a base runner on first. Yeah, I didn't go back for that game. We, we left Oakland City and went to Stillwater to bring it. So you coming? Courtesy runner at first for the Tigers. Safe at first on the touchback. Back walks for the Tigers, and they'll have 2-1. As I alluded to, they need five runs here in the bottom of the seventh to force extra innings, six to win by walk-off. It's been all Worcester since the top of the second inning when they got a leadoff single, and then a RBI knocked through left field wall. With RBI doubles in the third inning as well. And then another one for good measure in the fourth. Roth has been able to get the stops necessary since then. However, giving up six runs. Let's put them in a real hole here for the bottom of the seventh. I'd like to once again thank our coverage sponsor for today's live stream, video highlights, and plays of the game. Community State Bank and Tidwell Sports, etc. Just a reminder, our feature event next week will be the 21st annual Sean Hall Memorial Woodbat Tournament at Atoka High School. Change in format, four teams have dropped out. All games will now be at Atoka High School instead of the sports complex and high school throughout Thursday and Friday, and then feeding games over Saturday. So only 10 teams in the tournament this year. All games will be at Atoka High School. Chopper, this one could be a fielder's choice to first or three. Base runners advance, second and third, two down. Oh, 
Bring in the heat on that pitch. Woo. In between games, there will be a brief lull before we restart the stream. I'm not sure if we'll be starting right on top at 4 o'clock or not. We have a shot to do that based upon the amount of time remaining in this game. Around 29 minutes or so, so I think we're probably going to be delayed a little bit beyond the 4 o'clock toss-up. One hops in the dirt. However, the new feed will be up. All you have to do is just go back to the top page of the Prep Nation TV channel. And you'll see it in red. It'll have a live button. Anything that is red, white means live. Anything that is black and white or gray just means that it's previously aired content or video on demand. We will save the game underneath playlists as well if you want to go back and watch them by team. Or you can simply just peruse and search underneath the tabs live and video. Please give us a subscribe. Nice hit out to left field. Perfectly executed. It's going to be enough for two runs to score. And the double for Roth has them in business here. They've cut the lead in half. 6-3, two down. Base runner on second for the Tigers. One hop in the dirt. Evens up the pitch count, I believe, 1-1. One, one. And safe at third on the stolen base. And the end for the strike now, full count. All right, all the cards on the table now for the Tigers. They're going to have to go all in here. 3 2, two down, base runner on third. They still need at least three runs to score here in the bottom of the seventh. Chopper going to be a real quick shot to third. Fires over 5-3 ground out to end the game. Your final score, Worcester 6, Roth 3. Thank you for watching Prep Nation TV coverage. We'll be back up here in approximately 25 minutes for the next game between the Tupelo Tigers and the Silo Rebels. Final score, Worcester Wildcats 6, Roth Tigers 3.